Welcome to the Social Innovation Global Ethics Forum 2018 Speaker Interview Series on Decentro Report. Brought to you by Hodu Token, a cryptocurrency driving the new renaissance. A link to this awesome blockchain project is below. Hi everyone, I'm Decentro here at CGEF 2018 in Singapore and uh, this is Ryan Merrill who's joining me right now. Ryan, thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Cool. So uh, I'll just introduce you to the viewers here. Ryan is an adjunct professor and research fellow in sustainability strategy and innovation at Singapore Management University. Uh, Ryan is passionate about mangrove trees and empowering the next generation of kids to change the world, which sounds amazing. I can't wait to hear more about this. <laughs> and so, okay. yeah, let's, let's talk about your passion for mangrove trees. Uh, we are going to rapidly scale up forestry, mangrove forestry across the Bay of Bengal, not to plant a million trees, but to plant a billion trees. And then the next billion trees. I like this. To provide green lungs for the planet and literally mitigate climate change. Mm -hmm. It requires radical revolutionary solutions. And peer-to-peer -peer investments, cutting out every step uh, between a, you know, a, a young girl or a young boy sitting in London saying, I am not going to eat a Big Mac today. I'm going to plant five trees. And I'm going to do it on a Jack's wallet. And then I'm going to play games based on that accomplishment with other people around the world who are doing the same things. And I'm going to communicate with a family in Myanmar who, or in Bangladesh or in Andhra Pradesh or in Sri Lanka or in southern China who are planting those trees and, and husbanding those trees and protecting those trees and watching that forest grow and create this global interaction of, of households uh, and corporate eco heroes who can support with large chunks of, of investments to plant maybe more than five, maybe 500 or 5,000 or 50,000 at a time. At that scale across a platform, we can actually approach a system that can mitigate climate change. Yeah. We're at a point, and I spoke about this at CIGEF, where we are facing a transition in the energy sector that will have radical ramifications for the degree to which we're putting carbon emissions into the air. We are making solutions and headway in energy that are giving us hope. We are up against a ticking clock. There are feedback cycles in the global climate system that require us to take immediate, significant action now. We don't have time to wait. So we need to transition our energy sector as rapidly as we can. We also need bigger lungs on the planet. And mangrove forests and other forests provide those lungs. It just happens to be the case that mangroves are the best lungs we have. Right. I never realized that. But, um, I mean, I've always associated the Amazon forest as like the uh, Terranian lungs of the planet. Um, I want to talk about your uh, story with Jack choosing uh, five trees over a Big Mac because it sort of bridged, bridges to this uh, concept of your goal to empower children to uh, take sure. the bull by the horns yeah. and uh, feel like they can actually change the world. So let's talk about that angle because that really interests me okay. in, in my niche uh, area, which is teaching math to goldfish. Uh, right. So yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about your uh, your buzz on uh, empowering children to change the world. Uh, we can't rely on adults. <laughs> I to, love it. I knew that's where to you were save going. the planet. As soon as you said we can't, I was like, he's going to say we can't rely on adults. <laughs> we can't. Um, <laughs> it it requires what we can do as adults, right? Who are already stuck thinking about uh, next week's bills. Mm. We can empower the youth of today to save the planet for themselves. Mm. And we, we have to take action now across the board, but we have to provide the generations that are going to be bearing the brunt of the impacts of climate change with the tools to mitigate now. And if we think about where, at least in affluent societies, people spend money, they lavish resources on their children. And on the major, children tend to spend these resources or have these resources spent in a lot of inefficient ways. Um, maybe not everybody, but on, in sort of uh, mass consumer societies, and I've got a three-year-old and I throw money away on her too, I know how it feels. When we raise our children as consumers 
and we don't teach them that that consumption is driving us over a cliff as a species, we're doing them a disservice. Yeah. If we can raise them as global citizens and give them rather than uh, their fourth Barbie or their fourth uh, matchbox car, I'm dating myself, um, <laughs> instead of that extra toy, uh, give them the tools to plant trees. And not just the tools, but the choice. Yeah, oh, like you bet. As you're talking, I'm picturing my own kids, and I can actually see them thinking, do I want this toy from the $2 shop, or do I want to plant more mangrove two, trees? Two mangroves. And I can actually see them, especially my kids, because uh, yeah. they're really switched on. I can see them being like, no, nah, I'm going to go online, give me your phone, Dad, and, and then, I'm going to like bomb some mangrove trees right, on right, the coast right. of Bangladesh. Get this in. <laughs> so in addition of saying... Hey, be a, be a junior philanthropist. Go plant trees. Then let's say, and let's have a social experience based on it. Let's plant trees and let's link you together with that community. Let's plant trees and let's give you an opportunity to celebrate that event with your friends. Let's plant trees and have you uh, uh, give you uh, an opportunity to, to play games, global risk, uh, forest barren, whatever it is, so that you can have an experience where you're celebrated at a micro level for being an eco-hero. And that in that process, you become aware of the corporate eco heroes and the big players around the world who are laying down the resources to plant a million mangroves at a time. So let's, let's put these populations together and let's put them together under a paradigm not of consumption. I'm selling a new product that your kids want, but I'm a big company and I just planted half a million mangroves and I'm creating a social challenge based on the tokens that I uh, sort of generated through that event and I'm employing those tokens across the platform for a pro-social challenge that your kids can then go out and clean up your local creek and get those tokens and then you can own you know, the sponsorship for those trees without ever having spent any money. That's really cool. So when, when is the app going to be released where... Uh, right, we're in development. Where, where my where my son can be like, I want to plant some trees today. I'll be like, Yeah, here, sweet, do it. Right. Use your allowance to do that. Yeah, so we're, we're very much Bill Gates uh, way before he was rich. We're we're uh, <laughs> so right right now it's a very homegrown operation. We're working with two universities in Singapore mm -hmm. um, for the, the wireframes of the UI and laying out the strategic plans. We haven't gone really uh, to to VCs or angel investors or big philanthropists asking for money yet we like to think that we will actually be able to home grow a friends and family ERC 20 token and and get uh, a vehicle for peer-to-peer -peer philanthropy into the market within the next six months we're okay. working with the university here to develop the beginning of the UI of the user interface to start to get the app rolling out uh, by middle of next year and as with everyone else in the startup space, that could be delayed. It could be accelerated. It really depends on how the community grows and who comes back to us saying, I want to get involved and I've got a team. So we are looking for people globally who believe uh, in peer-to-peer -peer philanthropy, mm -hmm. believe in gamified philanthropy, mm -hmm. believe in blockchain for good, who have development resources or fiscal resources and want to deploy that to what I truly believe is the most effective pathway to a carbon neutral uh, global economy. Yeah, I can see it. And if you need game testers, sign me up. <laughs> okay. I've got three kids who are going to be willing right. Right. and uh, they're quite switched on. So you get some pretty good feedback from my children. That's for sure. Okay. Um, well, Ryan, it's been absolute pleasure to talk about this side of the project because yeah. I did uh, interview Dr. Simon and uh, got the mangrove side of the equation uh, spelled out for, for me and the viewers. But this side of empowering the kids, kids becoming philanthropists with, you know, four or five bucks at a time, it's bloody genius. I love it. All right. You guys are going to succeed. Well, I, we have to succeed. You will. It's a collective effort. Okay, let's do it. Me and your kids. Yeah. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, cool. Right on. Thanks. Thank, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks. Before you move on, make sure you like and share this video. Also, please subscribe and ring the bell so you can catch the rest of the Decentral Report playlist for CGEF 2018, giving you a chance to meet all the speakers from this awesome event. Brought to you by Hodu Token, a cryptocurrency driving the new renaissance. A link to this awesome blockchain project is below.